Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 4-1, Dividing Multiples of 10 and 100. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter. She said, I make mistakes like the next man. In fact, being, forgive me, rather cleverer than most men, my mistakes tend to be correspondingly huger. So I think she's just saying that the more complex and complicated things we deal with in our life or in our math class, the more likely we are going to make some big mistakes, and that's okay. It's okay to take those risks. It's good. Our learning goal today is use mental math strategies to easily divide multiples of 10 and 100 by a single digit. Our individual lesson learning goals are to use mental math strategies to divide multiples of 10 and 100. That means we're not going to be using the standard division algorithm. We will use mental math strategies. We're going to divide basic facts and we're going to annex zeros when we need to. Here's our vocabulary. Um, you'll just need to know this so that when we're referring to different parts of the problem, you'll know what we're talking about. So write it down. The dividend is the number that is being divided. The divisor is the number by which the dividend is being divided. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. So let's take a look at how that's going to fit into our problems. Here's an example. 72,000 divided by 8. Here's how it would look written as an expression. 72,000 divided by 8. We used a math symbol there. 72,000 is the dividend. That's the big number that we're starting out with. 8 is the divisor. That's the number we're dividing by. And the answer that we get will be our quotient. We just don't know what that is yet. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what the answer to this problem would be without doing a regular standard algorithm division problem. This is pretty similar to the way the strategies that we used when we were using mental math to multiply. We underline our non-zero digits. 72 is the only number or the only the only digits in here that are not zeros and 8 is a non-zero digit. And then we just divide those two numbers. 72 divided by 8 is 9, because 9 times 8 is 72. Then we take those three zeros and we just add them onto the end. 1, 2, 3, just like if we were multiplying. That's pretty easy. Now, if we were looking at this like a regular division problem, just so you're picturing it, this is where we would write the 72,000. We don't want to work it out this way, but I want you to see why the dividend is actually in the house. We'll talk more about that in later lessons. The divisor is the guy going into the house. That's the number we're dividing by. And the quotient would be our number on top, our answer. So that gives you a little bit of a connection with an actual division problem now. So let's do our first practice problem. 5,600 divided by 8. Remember, you can always go back and look at your notes for the example problem. You should have written those down and done exactly what I did. Underline those non-zero digits, perform your simple division problem, and then add the zeros back to it. Go ahead and try that and be ready to check your answer. Did you write 700? Let's see how we did that. 5,600 divided by 8. So we'll start off by underlining our non-zero digits. 56 in this number and 8 in this number. Now we can divide. 56 divided by 8. 56 divided by 8 is 7 because 7 times 8 is 56. Now we just count our zeros. One, two and add those two zeros after our seven. Seven hundred. One hundred eighty thousand divided by six. Push pause, do your work, and then push play when you're ready. Did you write thirty thousand? Let's see how we worked that one. One hundred eighty thousand divided by six. First, we underline our non-zero digits. That makes for an easy division problem. 18 divided by 6. 
That would be three, because three times six is 18. Now we count all those zeros. One, two, three, four, and add them after our three. One, two, three, four, and put our comma in the correct place. So now we'll practice with word problems. Here's our first problem. Number three, Ron buys a bag of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. There are 1,500 jelly beans in a bag. If Ron wants to share them equally between himself, Hermione, and Harry, how many jelly beans will they each get? Go ahead and pause it, work it out in your journal, and push play when you're ready. Don't forget to use those same strategies we just used a minute ago. Did you write 500? Let's see how we did that. So there were 1,500 jelly beans in all. And we're going to divide them equally between Ron, Hermione, and Harry. So that's three people. So we underline our non-zero digits. 15 divided by three is five. Now we just count our zeros, one, two and add them here. It's time to challenge yourself. We've got a table this time. Hagrid bought 35,000 chocolate frogs to share with Harry, Hermione, and Ron. The chocolate frogs were jumping everywhere. Hagrid and Ron caught and ate the number of frogs shown in the table over there. Harry and Hermione each caught and ate half of the remaining frogs. How many frogs did Harry and Hermione each catch and eat? So you would be filling those numbers in on the table. Write your answer in your flip journal and show your work. I know you can do this on a calculator. The amazing thing and the fun thing will be to do it on paper. Come back tomorrow and check your answer. Finishing up, review your learning goals. Do you understand the patterns that we were doing, that we were using? Um, you may need to go back and watch it again. You may need to make up some practice problems for yourself. That would be okay. In that case, you can check your answers using a calculator just to make sure you did them correctly. In your journal, write down if you are at a one, a two, or a three level in your learning. Don't forget to write down any questions that you have. If you're like, Mrs. Gooding, I don't know where this number came from. How did you get this number? How did you do that? Where did you come up with that answer? Be very specific in your questions so that I can be specific in the answers that I give you. You have completed lesson 4-1, dividing multiples of 10 and 100. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.